Welcome to KDE 4.6, a very powerful and user-friendly Linux desktop. In this video tutorial, I'm going to introduce you to the wonderful world of this desktop environment and take a look at the individual pieces that make KDE such an outstanding entry for the Linux graphical desktop environment. I want to begin with the kickoff menu. For those of you coming from the world of Windows, you can think of this as the Start menu. When you click on the K button, the Kickoff menu opens to reveal a tabbed-based menu system. The default tab is the Favorites tab. These are applications that are included by default or added by the user. We'll add more entries in a moment. The next tab is the Applications tab. This is where most of the Kickoff interaction happens. As you can see, the Applications tab is broken down into subcategories just like most main desktop menus. If you navigate inside of a submenu, the application launchers are revealed. You can add an application launcher to the Favorites menu by simply right-clicking and then selecting Add to Favorites, or you can add a desktop launcher or add it to the panel. The next tab is the Computer tab. Here, it is possible to, the, to access system settings, the run dialog, the add remove software tool, and various directories or places. The recently used tab will display recently used applications and documents. This offers quick access to recently edited files or used applications. Finally, the leave tab allows the user to log out, lock the screen, switch users, put the computer to sleep, restart, or shut down. If the kickoff menu seems a bit too awkward, the old style menu can be turned on by right-clicking the K button and selecting Switch to Classic Menu Style. If the menu itself needs editing, right-click the K button and select Edit Applications. This will open up the KDE Menu Editor. KDE makes use of a panel, which most users are accustomed to. And like most panels, the KDE panel allows the users to access minimized applications, get system and application notifications, as well as configure panel options. The notification area is similar to any other notification area or system tray and can be found by default on the far right side of the panel. To configure the panel, Right-click any blank space on the panel and select Panel Options, Panel Settings. With the Panel Settings window open, the screen edge can be configured, the height of the panel can be configured, and each panel object, such as the system tray, can be configured. To configure an object, hover over that object and then click the settings icon. Here you can see the system tray settings. Configure this, click OK, and you're done. The next topic is widgets. Widgets are very special to the KDE desktop. Widgets are added to the desktop for extra functionality such as social networking, entertainment, and even system information, such as this command line widget. To add a widget to the desktop, either right-click the panel and select Panel Options, Add Widgets, or go up to the top right corner to the Toolbox and click the Toolbox Cashew and select Add Widgets. This will open up the Widgets window where you can scroll through and select any number of widgets from the listing. Once you find a widget you like, click on it and drag it to the desktop where you can begin to immediately use that widget. If you don't find the widget you like in the listings, you can also click the Get New Widgets button where you can download new widgets from the network or install a locally saved widget. Once you're done, click on the X to get rid of the window. Activities are a very unique and useful feature to KDE. The idea behind an activity is this. You break the desktop up into activities so that each desktop is well defined by what the desktop does. 
you could have one desktop for writing, one desktop for networking, one desktop for productivity, and one empty desktop, and so on. There are pre-configured activity templates that can be added. The best way to illust their illustrate activities is to add one, the search and launch activity. When this activity is added, a special desktop will be created that is specifically designed for searching and launching applications. To add this activity, click on the toolbox and then click Activities. Now click the Create Activity button, select Templates, and then select Search and Launch. As you can see, a new icon for Search and Launch has been added. If you want to configure this or rename it, you can click on the Configuration button, double click the area, and let's call this Search and Launch. Click Apply, and we're done. Now a really neat feature to activities is you can pause an activity so that it's not available for use. To do that, let's, let's pause the desktop. Click on the stop button and it's paused. That desktop or activity can no longer be used until we restart it by clicking the play button. Now, with the activities window closed, how do you get to your activities? Very simple. Click the Super or Windows button and the Tab button at the same time. You can use that Tab button while holding down the Super button to cycle through your activities. Finally, I would like to illustrate some of the KDE desktop effects. KDE has its own built-in compositor, so there's no need for the addition of Compiz. There are plenty of effects that can be configured, such as transparency, wobbly windows, and the famous desktop cube. In order to configure the desktop effects, click on the Start menu, click on Computer, System Settings, and then click on the Desktop Effects button. In this window, all of the KDE desktop effects can be configured. You can permanently disable desktop effects, temporarily suspend desktop effects, configure common settings, access all of the effects. If you scroll through here, you'll see there are quite a few desktop effects to, to be configured. Some of them have configuration options and some of them do not. To enable an effect, click the checkbox here. To configure an effect, click on the Configuration button here. Let's take a look at the options available for the Desktop Cube. Scroll down to Window Management, and then click on the Configuration button for Desktop Cube. Here, you can configure the appearance, the opacity, the background, which is also called the Sky Dome, and in the advanced, you can configure the zoom, which is how far the cube is away from you when it's rotating. In the advanced tab, you can select the compositing type or the engine, and the general options, as well as the OpenGL options. Now, not all machines are capable of handling the desktop effects. If at installation, your, your machine is not able to handle the, the effects, your distribution will most likely turn off the effects for you. If you find that your computer is slow using KDE, you might want to disable the effects altogether. And that concludes our introduction to the KDE 4.6 desktop. KDE is a wonderful desktop environment and should appeal to all levels of user experience. Take it for a test drive and see just how well this desktop suits your needs. Thank you for watching this Linux.com video tutorial with Jack Walmart.